Hey everybody, it's the Uniformed Historian. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to spend some time with me. Today I want to talk a little bit about Decoration Day and the history of what we have come to know as Memorial Day. Now, a lot of people see Memorial Day as the beginning of summer, you know. All the swimming pools are starting to open and everybody's grilling out and drinking beer. Everybody's getting together with their family and their friends. They might, you know, watch a race or watch another sports event or something. But that's not really what Memorial Day is all about. And that's really what I want to take a few minutes to talk about today. I'm joined I'm joining you from Spring Grove Cemetery in Parkersburg, West Virginia, which is actually historically a black cemetery. It was the first black cemetery created in the 1890s, and it's actually the only black cemetery in Wood County, West Virginia. There's many final resting places here from the Civil War, such as people like Daniel Cyrus and Thomas Beavers, who I will probably talk about in the near future since I'm already visiting them here today. But before we get into all that, let's back up a little bit. And you're probably wondering, why did I choose Spring Grove Cemetery, a historically black cemetery, to come and talk about Memorial Day? Well, I'm so glad you asked, let me tell you. It's my opinion that the very first Decoration Day, or Memorial Day, took place in May 1865 in Charleston, South Carolina. What happened there was there was a Union prisoner of war camp for captured Union soldiers, and approximately 257 of them did not survive. After the war ended, a group of approximately 25 black citizens of the area got together, and they started to dig up these bodies from a mass grave inside this racetrack, where, uh, this racetrack which had been converted into a prisoner of war camp. After they had finished reburying the bodies with proper Christian burials, many people got together, thousands of people got together, and they paraded around the racetrack, they decorated the graves, there was a group of school-aged children that sang patriotic songs such as America the Beautiful and John Brown's Body, and it was really a grand spectacle that's actually been pretty much forgotten to history until historian David Blythe recently brought this back into the national memory. A few years later, after the war ended in 1868, a Union general by the name of John Logan got the idea of making a national holiday to unify the country and have everybody decorate the graves on the same day. He was very high in the Grand Army of the Republic, and a lot of the Southern citizens did not really like this idea of a holiday to honor Union soldiers because they had been conquered by these Union soldiers. So even to this day, many Southern states have their own traditions about Decoration Day or Memorial Day. During the period following the Civil War, known as Reconstruction, many Southern citizens were not allowed to decorate the graves of the Confederate fallen, and this is where the story of women decorating those graves with scattering rose petals begins. So, while you're out enjoying your barbecues and your sports events and your family get-togethers, please take a few moments to go visit your local cemetery, make sure it's being upkept, leave a flag for a veteran, do the right thing as an American citizen. I appreciate you guys taking a few minutes to join me in this cemetery today. Take care, God bless, and have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend.